everyone, I'm Emily and today we are going over the science behind Alka-Seltzer rockets. <laughs> For this one, you're going to need Alka-Seltzer tablets, a film canister, and just a little bit of water. First, let's talk about why Alka-Seltzer tablets fizz when they're added to water. It's pretty simple actually. Alka-Seltzer tablets are made out of sodium bicarbonate, or baking soda, and the dry form of citric acid, which is the main ingredient in lemon juice. But because they're in a solid form in this tablet, those molecules aren't mixing together. They're kind of just staying in place. When you do mix them together, we kickstart an acid-base reaction that creates water and sodium citrate, a type of salt, and carbon dioxide bubbles. So, when we add this to water, we're kickstarting an acid-base reaction that's creating water, sodium citrate, and these bubbles, which are carbon dioxide bubbles. But what happens if we put a lid on our film canister? That acid-base reaction is happening, those bubbles are building, and then all of a sudden the pressure becomes so high that that the seal between the lid and the film canister is broken. The air in the film canister gets pushed out this way and because of Newton's third law of motion, that pushes our film canister this way because for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. I wanna do an experiment here. I wanna see what will happen when we fill the same film canister with different amounts of water. So let's start with filling it most of the way up to the top. Okay, so it didn't take very long for that film canister to explode. And here's what I think is happening here. When we fill this rocket most of the way up to the top, we're not leaving a lot of volume for the bubbles to fill, meaning we're gonna reach the pressure required to flip off the cap sooner. So the rocket will go off more quickly, but because we don't have that much volume of air up there, we don't have a lot of fuel to push our film canister upward. So it's not gonna go up as high. You saw that when it exploded, it went up like, here, not very high, right? Now let's do that same experiment, but now we'll fill up the film canister halfway. Okay, so it took a little bit longer for our rocket to go off, but it went a little bit higher. Now let's try that same experiment, but with just a splash of water in our film canister. Tracing. So that one took a little while longer to pop off, but you could see that when it did, it, it just exploded. It so if you are creating Alka-Seltzer rockets at home and you want to make it fly as high as possible, only put a splash of water in your film canister because you're going to kickstart that acid-base reaction initially, but you have more volume for those bubbles to fill. It'll take a little while for that pressure to build up and pressure to get high enough to pop off your lid. But once you do, you're going to have more fuel in your rocket to push downwards, right? And because for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction, you're going to have more fuel pushing your film canister upwards and it's going to hit your ceiling and make a huge mess. So maybe do this outside. And that is the science behind Alka-Seltzer rockets. 